The April 2nd meeting of the Thousand Oaks Youth Commission is now called to order. We will now have the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Shao. Commissioners, please turn your mics on and please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Right hand over your heart, ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now have roll taken by staff liaison Francine Spriegel. Thank you. Please say here or present when I call your name. Commissioner Boyajan. Here. Commissioner Brousseau. Here. Commissioner Bryman. Here. Commissioner Cutler Dye. Here. Commissioner Letterer. Here. Commissioner Leone. Here. Commissioner George McGuigan. Here. Commissioner Jeb McGuigan. Here. Commissioner Owens. Here. Commissioner Saute. Here. Commissioner Schooley. Here. Commissioner Shaw. Here. Commissioner Stein is absent. Commis Adult Commissioner Martinez. Here. And Adult Commissioner Petrus. Here. Thank you. At this time, I would like to ask Commissioner Dye to introduce item number four, the public comment section of our meeting. This is a time in our meeting when we invite members of the public to state their concerns about youth-related issues in our city or to present items for commission consideration. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak at this time? There being none, let's move on. Thank you. The next item is item number five, the guest speaker portion of our meeting. Would um, Commissioner Owens please tell us about that? Yes, of course. Tonight, our guest speaker is the professor of business, Richard Herco, at Pepperdine University. Richard joined Pepperdine University in August 2012. He is a PhD and MBA from the University of Pittsburgh and a bachelor's in science and economics from Pennsylvania State University. He conducts research in corporate Governance, governance and competitive intelligence. Prior to working on his PhD, he spent 14 years in the corporate world, including Fortune 500 companies, uh, startups, and the U.S. Army. Richard and his family now live in Thousand Oaks, California. Without further ado, here is Professor Herco. Good evening, and thank you for inviting me to join you tonight. Um, what I'd like to talk to you tonight about is a, a very difficult issue. Um, one of those great things that, um, as adults, uh, we're largely going to leave in your laps to solve. So thank you for going ahead and taking on that challenge, even though you didn't know you had it before tonight. Um, uh, this is a field of uh, international business called Wicked Problems. And it looks at the difficulty that uh, some countries have in um, overcoming their disadvantages and how we can start to look at those problems differently and maybe start looking for solutions. Um, has anyone read Thomas L. Friedman's Hot, Flat, and Crowded? Is that required reading yet at the high school level? Oh, wow, okay. Um, I'll be assigning homework then as soon as uh, the discussion's over. Um, uh, what Thomas Friedman posits is that the world is, um, not surprisingly based on his title, hot and getting hotter, flat and getting flatter, and crowded and growing ever more crowded. Um, and so... The problem, though, is, is that we're not uniformly flat. And so can anyone tell me what this picture is? You didn't know there was going to be homework tonight. I apologize. This is viewer participation. Courtney, you look like you might have an answer for what that is. I don't know, trade connections? Sort of. It's all the airline routes uh, in, in the world. And if you notice, that's not uniform. And so the eastern coast of the United States and Southern California, completely unseen. Western Europe, completely unseen. But you can make out all of Africa. You can make all, out all of Central Asia. You can make out uh, most of South America and Mexico and Canada and, and Alaska. And what that means is that you can't travel from those places to those places. It's very easy to get from Paris to London, very easy to get from New York to LA. Not so easy to get from Anchorage to Buenos Aires, for example. And so we're not equally flat. At the same time, we're not equally crowded. Um, and so you can see that the most purple regions of the world are the most crowded regions. And those uh, countries um, that are most shaded in dark purple have some real issues. They have a lot of people. 
they have scarce resources, and they have people in competition for those resources. As opposed to countries that are less, uh, in this case, white uh, or, or pale purple, um, have way fewer people, but equally have problems. Uh, problems because people uh, not only take up resources, but they also solve problems, and they also make solutions. And so we see countries that are underpopulated, uh, they have issues as well. And finally, um, even without talking about the issue of global warming, the world is not equally hot. And so you can see that um, there are parts of um, uh, Asia, uh, that's that giant country, uh, continent, uh, to the right side of the, the chart, is getting hotter and has been getting hotter for some time. And what does that mean for the people in that area? Well, for them, in the short run, it means growing seasons are longer. It actually means they will benefit from the same thing that we hear on the news all the time is a bad thing. Um, if you were a, a teenager in Alaska, uh, this summer uh, in central Alaska, they opened up a beach for the first time. Uh, being from Southern California, I heard some people are on their way to Hawaii uh, for their education, Alyssa. Um, beaches are no big deal for you, uh, but uh, in central Alaska, having a beach uh, is an amazing thing. And so, um, whether it's the flatness of the world, the crowdedness of the world, or the hotness of the world, um, there are going to be winners and losers. And so we need to understand who those winners and losers are. Um, here are the winners. The fortunate three are Switzerland, Australia, and Canada. They have extremely long lives, and they are extremely wealthy. And so they have benefited from all of these trends. And so if you're a resident of Switzerland, per capita income, $84,000 and change. Australia, $67,000. Canada, $51,000, uh, 2011 numbers. Uh, and those three countries all have lives, uh, expectations above 80 years. As opposed to the unfortunate three, the countries of Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Malawi. As you can see, uh, their per capita income, so the, the average person in these countries, less than $500 a year. If you look at it, Burundi, uh, at the top of the chart, uh, per capita income of under $200 would be a rounding error in Luxembourg. Right? Most people would say Luxembourg, $122,000 for shortness. In Burundi, that 272, actually the bottom three countries, is greater than their GDP in a year. And so what does it mean to live in one of these unfortunate three countries, or really any of the 10 countries on this list? Um, what it means is that you're, you have a short life. It's a life punctuated by violence. It's a life punctuated by un, long-term unemployment. You know, in the United States, we, we're really stressed out over 7% unemployment. Um, in some of the countries on this list, it's 70% unemployment. That is, one in three adults has a job. Um, literacy um, in some of these countries is as low as 20%. And unfortunately, that's an average. So George and Ryan and, and Courtney and Douglas have a better shot of being uh, able to read because the rest of the people on this panel here probably wouldn't be allowed to go to school in these countries. And so these countries are facing huge issues and that's, that we call these type of problems wicked problems. Um, there's no definitive formulation to the problem. There's no stopping rule, which means there's no way to figure out how to solve this problem and when it's done, right? How do you know when you've solved poverty? How do you know when you've solved hunger? How do you know when you've solved uh, violence against women? There's no stopping rule. Solutions to wicked problems are not true or false, but good or bad. There's no immediate test of a solution of a wicked problem. Um, no country is going to volunteer to be the control. You guys have all done scientific experiments, right? And you need a control for your scientific experiment. Would any, can you imagine any country volunteering to be the control in a scientific experiment to see if we can make the world a better place, right? And so there's no, there's no test of a solution. And every solution to a wicked problem is a one-shot operation. Wicked problems do not have exhaustively describable set of potential solutions. It's hard to figure out how big the solution is going to be. Every wicked problem is essentially unique, can be considered a symptom of another problem. 
The existence of a discrepancy representing wicked problems can be explained in numerous ways. And most importantly, the planner has no right to be wrong. So you can imagine these problems where um, not only are they very difficult to solve, but as soon as you select, su suggest a solution, somebody's ready to go ahead and tell you how bad that solution is. And that's what happens when we try and solve these problems worldwide. The best, we've come up with two solutions so far, and this is where we need your help. So solution number one is trade. And so my chart kind of got cut off a little bit, but um, that's the United States and China. Uh, and in my lifetime and in the lifetime of some of the people in the audience, um, all of China uh, was an underdeveloped country, what we would call a backwards country. Um, that has changed dramatically for the uh, Pacific coast of China, the five provinces that line the Pacific coast. Because of trade, because of that $1.47 trillion in trade, those five provinces have become very wealthy and have become uh, to have a lifestyle very similar to ours. However, if you notice, um, uh, the, the other 25 provinces in China are all bright white, which means there's no international trade going on. And in those uh, parts of China, they're much like uh, sub-Saharan Africa. Very rural, very underdeveloped, very few resources, and very low prospects for, for a long and happy life. And so we think that trade is one of the solutions. But we're not, we're not a make things country anymore. We're an ideas country. And so what we're going to need you to do is think about the next set of ideas. Um, this is a, uh, the pattern of expansion uh, of a very popular uh, San Bernardino-based company that started in 1940. Anybody a business historian in the room? Anybody ever been to San Bernardino? Leanne, what's their most famous export in San Bernardino? McDonald's. McDonald's. And so McDonald's started in 1940. Um, they don't make all the burgers there in San Bernardino. They've come up with ideas. And Ray Kroc started coming up with ideas about how to serve people and how to make food affordable and how to create a common experience across all of his restaurants. And that idea has grown and prospered and moved all around the globe. And so that's our first idea, really, is that if we can get people like you excited about coming up with new ideas, that's going to help the entire world, because it certainly has. Because when you look at where McDonald's is and where McDonald's is not, there's never been a war between two countries that have had McDonald's. Think about that for a second. Now, we almost had one. So Russia and Ukraine both have McDonald's. And so if they had actually turned into a shooting war, we would have had our first inner McDonald's war. But, um, but we haven't yet. And so what that suggests to a lot of us is that things like McDonald's break down barriers between people. And people don't seem too different from each other when they're both eating a Big Mac or both eating, drinking from a shamrock shake. And so um, Ray Kroc certainly didn't set out to change the world or make the world a safer place or a better place. And in fact, I would advise you not to eat McDonald's if you want to be on that 80, 82, 85-year-old uh, list. I'm not, ma'am, I'm not advocating. <laughs> uh, uh, so, um, but there's, that's an amazing idea that Ray Kroc came up with, and it's had amazing re uh, amazingly positive repercussions. And so what I'd like to ask you to do today is think about getting involved um, and figuring out what's going on. Uh, Ray Kroc traveled quite a bit, um, and there are, I'm, I'm, I teach at Pepperdine University, so I'm going to talk about what Pepperdine does, right? We send students all over the globe uh, for short and long-term visits into these countries, because the only way you can figure out what's going on in a country is to actually be in the country. Um, and so the only way you can figure out what, what's going on in Argentina is to actually visit Argentina. Um, as I have, Buenos Aires. The only way to get to figure out what people are doing in China is to go to China and figure out what their problems are. Get to know the people and, and help them solve their problems. 
Um, we do that in a number of ways. We have um, uh, short and long-term visits to these countries. We have uh, Project X, which is absolutely amazing. Um, we're working with um, uh, the national laboratories across the country and figuring out how to bring to market their underutilized patents. Um, I do a lot of work in what's called uh, knowledge management. Uh, it was, uh, Katie called it competitive intelligence, which is a spin-off of knowledge management. Um, and it's looking at um, how to best utilize knowledge. And so I'm working with some folks in Poland right now um, to figure out why they have this great educational system and they can't patent more new ideas. And so where are those new ideas going? They have very bright people at very good universities, and they can't figure out how to um, get more of those ideas into the marketplace. Um, uh, I will be starting up a project in, our, in uh, Indonesia to go ahead and look at, um, uh, they do what's called microfinance, uh, taking very, very small amounts of money, as small as $100, right? So the same thing we would take for a weekend at the, or for a night at the Oaks Malls and uh, take that $100 and create a new business. And so how do we make those businesses more efficient? Um, uh, also, we have the SEER project, which is uh, sustainability, um, taking a look at the fundamentals of a business, um, its financial performance, the quality of its products, its environmental impact, and figuring out how to make businesses better. Um, so uh, I would plug Pepperdine. I'll be glad to answer questions about Pepperdine. Uh, but I'd be glad to answer questions you have about college or getting involved. The bottom line is I would encourage you, uh, if you haven't uh, finished your high school career, to go in tomorrow and say, how many more math classes can I take? How many more science classes can I take? Uh, all that boring stuff, right, Abby? Uh, and No, that's okay. And um, get into those math and science classes and use those ideas that you have there to develop your creativity. Um, because those are the hard those, those hard classes that challenge you are the ones that really get your brain going um, and look for ways to to develop your creativity so that you can help solve some of these problems so with that I'll be glad to take any questions for anyone please so you talked um, a lot about well towards the end here about what kind of classes we should take is there any other sort of recommendation um, that you have for us in terms of how we should communicate communicate to colleges who we are and how we apply to the colleges? Like, um, I would tell you to start thinking about, as I mentioned, um, uh, resume, right? So uh, a well-balanced resume of um, athletic endeavors and academic endeavors and unique experiences um, that allow you to show to a university I'm a unique person that's going to be unlike anyone else that's coming to your university. In human research terms, we call them purple squirrels. Um, and so how many purple squirrels do you see around? Not very many. And so if you walk into that school, if your resume walks into that school and you're a purple squirrel, they're going to look at you and say, wow, this is someone who doesn't look anything like us. Um, everyone's going to have academics. Everyone's going to have athletics. So what types of things can you do that are unique? Um, a a not-for-profit activity, a charitable activity that you're passionate about, that you can talk about for an hour, that you'll, you'll drive somebody crazy talking about. Um, international experiences that you're absolutely passionate about, that have changed your life or could change your life, um, that you could spend, uh, in, in the old days we would have slideshows, you'd have that neighbor that had the slide carousel right? But if you, um, if you have those mental slides and, can, and talk about these amazing experiences you've had, um, and that comes through in your resume, that'll set you apart from everybody else. Please. Um, for students looking to go into the type of class that you teach, what classes do you recommend that they take in high school? Uh, so I would recommend a, uh, a mix of um, STEM classes, science, technology, engineering, and math, plus some basic business courses. If you're, I'm assuming TO offers basic accounting, basic finance, 
not personal finance, but some sort of basic finance class. Um, and also, most importantly, a language. And with no disrespect here, not a dead language um, like French or Latin. I took Latin for three years. It's awesome when Jeopardy's on, but other than that, it, it doesn't really help me a whole lot. Um, uh, think Spanish, think Chinese, think German. Uh, because those, uh, think Japanese, because those are the languages that are being dealt with in business today. Um, France is a very nice country to visit, but it's not a hub of, of innovation. And so you've got to be thinking about being someplace where there's innovation happening. You're welcome. Jed. Do you believe that studying abroad would be useful in other majors as well besides business? Absolutely. I think um, there are 320 million Americans, which means there's roughly, Douglas helped me out, 6.7 billion non-Americans, you're going to be working outside the United States at some point in your life. You're going to be working for a company that is not headquartered in the United States, regardless of what you're doing. And so the more you can get accustomed to the United States just being a really great market to play in, as opposed to the only market, um, the better off you're going to be. Um, within my lifetime, you know, trade maps like this used to have the United States at the center and then all the other countries kind of off to the side. Well, it's a more balanced world now. Um, the United States is the number one market uh, for international firms. Everyone wants to come here. But it's just a market. It's a very nice market to be in. It's not the only market anymore. Um, are there any more commissioner questions or comments? Okay. Well, thank you very much to our thank guest speaker, you. and thank you to Commissioner Dai. I'm now going to turn the meeting back over to Vice Thanks. Chair Boyajian. Thank you so much one last time, and thank you, Chair Leone. So item number six on the agenda tonight is school and liaison reports. So in addition to being an advisory body to City Council, the Youth Commission also appoints commissioners to act as liaisons to various youth organizations. So first up, item 6A is the Teen Center Advisory Committee. Could Commissioner McGuigan please lead that report? All right, so uh, spring is in full swing at the Fabulous Teen Center. On Saturday, April 5th, we will hold our annual Black Light Dance from 7 to 10 p.m., this dance is for Caneo Valley 7th and 8th graders only. Admission is $10 and includes pizza and a drink. Wear neon or white and glow the night away. We will also be going on an excursion to Magic Mountain over spring break on Wednesday, April 16th. The fee is only $35. Uh, limited space is available, so please book now. Um, our spring program season is due to start the, uh, the week of April 21st. A number of different class, uh, classes in sports, art, dance, Music and computer science will be offered. These classes are offered usually one hour a week for six weeks. Uh, and again, you can register on our website, and I'll be sure to mention the name of that at the end. Um, our co-ed middle school volleyball league season is halfway through, and our girls' friendly soccer tournament championships games are going on right now. We also have a Dare to Dream music festival on April 6th, uh, 26th. This festival uh, is put on in cooperation with a Sage Champagne uh, presentation kind of thing. It will include celebrity guest appearances and performance raffles and much more. For more information about the fabulous Thousand Oaks Teen Center or to register for any of the classes I just mentioned, uh, try www.thousandoaksteencenter.com or call us at 805-494-5156. Again, that's 805-494-5156 or visit our Facebook page, which is Thousand Oaks Teen Center. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner McGuigan. And next up, we have um, item number 6B. So um, that is the Thousand Oaks Library Teen Advisory League, or TOTAL. So could Commissioner Schooley please lead this report? Hi. So this is what we have going on at the library for teens this month. So over spring break, we have a few movie marathon type things. Um, so there will be a free screening of... Uh, Man of Steel on Monday, April 14th from 1 to 3.15 at the Grant R. Brim Hall Library. Um, Tuesday, April 15th at the Newberry Park Branch, there will be a screening of Frozen from 2 to 3.30 p.m. Thursday, April 17th, also at the Newberry Park Branch Library, there will be Planes screening from 2 to 3.30 
And then in order to celebrate Earth Day, there will be a film presentation of the Crimson Wing, Mystery of the Flamingos, um, Tuesday, April 22nd um, at the Newberry Park Branch Library. It's going to be at 3 to 4.20. And at the Grant, Grant R. Brim Hall Library, it's going to be from 6.30 to 7.50. Um, also, keep in mind that the Thousand Oaks Library website does offer a ton of cool programs if you're looking for mentors or like um, study buddy type things. So they offer a lot of cool um, programs free online. You could check that out, www.toaks.org slash library if you guys need help on homework or studying for tests, anything like that. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Schooley. And lastly, we have our ASG and ASB reports. So could Commissioner Bryman please lead those tonight? The Youth Commission invites representatives from each of our local high schools and intermediate or middle schools to present information about school activities for the purpose of generating a feeling of community service. Our first representative speaker today is Maxwell Walshaw and Iris Renson from Kalina Middle School. Good evening, my name is Maxwell Walshaw and I serve as the current president at Kalina Middle School. I recently attended the Castle State Conference from last Thursday to Saturday. Castle is an organization run by student leaders in high school and they teach school leadership classes from all over California who attend the conference. At the conference I was able to meet many students from different schools and we would share ideas that we would implement back at our own schools. And the leaders at the Castle State Board also taught us many leadership lessons, games, and activities that we can bring back to our own school. While at the conference, I ran a workshop teaching the importance of good communication and giving clear directions. And I also ran for the Castle State Board and I was elected as the Northern Freshman Director. I hope to take back all of the great things I've learned and I'm going to learn on the Castle State Board to my school and find a way to implement them in a way that greatly benefits my school. Good afternoon, my name is Iris Renson and I'm currently the ASB Vice President at Kalina Middle School. Last Friday, March 28th, we ended our school-wide service project, March Mana Madness. March Mana Madness is a food drive to help feed those who need it and give back to the community. Our school raised a total of 1,103 items, with our top homerooms being Mr. Kozlowski in, in third place with 87 items, Mrs. Shankar in second place with 90 items, and Mr. Burns taking first place with a total of 113 items. Mr. Burns' homeroom is getting free food coupons as reward for first place. Ms. Kern, one of our ASB advisors, has contacted Feinstein Foundation Challenge, where food will be valued at $1 per item. Feinstein money will be distributed in pro proportion to the amount of money and food each organization raises. The more mana is uh, the more mana is able to raise locally, the larger piece of the donation pie it will receive. Furthermore, Kalina School will be holding our yearly spring celebration, the Luau, on Friday, April 25th from 6 to 9 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Our next representative is Kira Bird from Newry Park High School. Hi, I'm a freshman at Newbury Park High School, and there's a lot of things coming up. Next week is our rally week with the theme being fire and ice. The spirit weeks, are, the spirit days are Disney Day, babies versus old people, nerds versus jocks, and I forgot the other one. Seniors, the order forms to order graduation DVDs are on the school website in the senior section. Forms should be turned into Miss Barker by the June 6th. Also, if you want to perform or speak at graduation, the applications for that are in the front office and are due April 5th, 25th. Future Panther Night is also next week, Wednesday the 9th, and we have various clubs and other organizations like ASG talk to the freshmen, and you can choose whatever you want and 
get information on that. So that's inter- That's cool. The ASG Spring Blood Drive is on April 10th, and the forms are in the office due April 8th. You have to be 16, there are weight, and there are weight requirements, requirements for the girls. The NPHS varsity dance team just won nationals in all of the sections they competed in, so congratulations, congratulations to them. MPHS Choir, Panther Chamber Singers, and Women's Ensembles having a concert this Thursday and Friday at 7 o'clock in the pack. Tickets are available for a $10 donation. All the proceeds go to the MPHS Choral Department. Thank you. Thank you so much to all the representatives that came out tonight. Um, if you do want to come talk um, and lead one of the reports for your schools, you can come to one of our meetings and speak on behalf of your school. So thanks again to all the representatives who came out tonight. And now back to Chair Leone. Thank you, Vice Chair Boyajan. So um, item number seven on the agenda is project reports. The Youth Commission undertakes a number of projects during the year, and I will introduce the following commissioners who will oversee the coordination of these projects and ask them to present summaries and please provide any updates. So our first item on the agenda is item number 7A, the Youth Leadership Summit recap, and Ms. Commissioner Boyajan is going to tell you about that. Hello again. So the Youth Leadership Summit took place Saturday, March 1st at the Thousand Oaks Library, and it was a huge success with over 60 teens and adult leaders who attended. And also that is 10 leaders, so that over 10 leaders. The Youth Commission would like to thank everyone who attended and all the commissioners who helped coordinate the event. And lastly, all the information and topics that we discuss at the, at the event will be created into a youth implementation po- report that will be sent to the City Council. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much again, Vice Chair Boyajian. Um, Item number 7B is the Youth Master Implementation Plan and Team Updates. So Commissioner Letterer is going to inform you about that. Thank you, Chair Leone. Our last implementation meeting went very well, and each of the subcommittees are nearing their goals. Unfortunately, we will not have a meeting next week, so don't come to that. Um, I would now like to ask each of the leaders of the subcommittee to talk about what their teams are doing, starting with um, Commissioner Schooley of the environmental team. Thank you, Commissioner Letter. So on the environmental team, we're kind of um, getting like more closer to reaching our goal, like Ryan said. Um, we were able to find well, we're almost able to uh, get like a singer to sing for our music video, so hopefully we'll be filming, filming that very soon, and hopefully we'll be able to show it to you guys. Thank you. Oh, wait, just one more thing. Sorry. Um, also, Arbor Earth Day is this Saturday, so you guys should go to that. It's a really cool event. You guys can learn so much about plants and environmental issues going on in the world right now, and it's a really cool event, and that's going to be behind um, the Ar- the Brent Grant our Brim Hall Library at the uh, the park that's right behind it. It's a really fun event. I encourage everyone to go and have a good day. Thank you. Okay. Um, also, if you want to volunteer for um, the um, Arbor Earth Day, you can go to toaks.org and go there for more information on volunteering. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Schooley. I would now like to ask Commissioner McGuigan to tell us about the Drugs and Alcohol Subcommittee. Okay, so we had a very successful um, event last month. Uh, on the 9th, we had our uh, social change theater for middle schoolers, and that went really well. And what we, what we do there is we try and bridge the gap between parents and their teens um, in regards to drugs and alcohol because it's a very difficult topic to talk about, so we ease the tension by having other teens there and uh, you don't necessarily talk to your parents, so it's a lot easier to communicate. Uh, in addition, this month on the um, let's see the the twenty sixth, we have our, our our first or first yeah first reality party of the year. And um, so, if you'd like to register for that, you can go to our website at www.straightupvc.org. I'm getting uh, this the twenty sixth again. That's yeah okay. So um, there should be space still available. So. Um, and that usually books up really, really fast. So if you're interested in doing that, please go. Um, and then we're also hoping to make a PSA about our reality parties, but we're still waiting back from TOTV. So if anyone from TOTV was watching this, we'd really appreciate a response. And uh, that that's all. All right. Thank you. 
Thank you, Commissioner McGuigan. I would now like to ask Commissioner Cutler Dye of the recreational team to tell us about what they're doing. In the recreation team, we have been working on a dodgeball event for high schools at the teen center. The cost is a dollar per person, and we encourage everyone to come in with teams of five to seven people. However, we still welcome single players to come and join a team on Friday, May 30th. For more information, call Pete Martinez at the Teen Center at 494-5156. Also, this Friday at 3 o'clock, the Youth Master Plan Recreation Team is teaming with CLU, the Reserve, and the 50th Anniversary Committee to host the Intergenerational Sports Expo on the CLU campus. Youth and Experience, 4 o'clock. It's actually at 4 o'clock on Friday. Sorry. Youth and experience teams will compete against each other in swimming and soccer events. There will be games and prizes for those who come to watch, and it promises to be a really exciting event. Admission is free, and once again, it is on Friday at 4 o'clock on the CLU campus. Hope to see you there. Thank you, Commissioner cutler Um That wraps it up for the subcommittee reports. Once again, there's no meeting next week. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Letterer. So item number 7C on our agenda is the Youth Recognition Awards. So I now turn the meeting over to Commissioner Jed Mugwigan. All right. So uh, for our Youth Recognition Awards, the applications were due earlier this week. And uh, we will be sending out an email to everyone who has been uh, invited to interview for an award uh, today. And the interviews will be on the 8th for middle schoolers and on the 9th for high schoolers held here at the uh, Thousand Oaks Civic Arts Plaza, and you'll find more details in an email that will be sent out tonight. And then you'll receive a phone call after your interview um, regarding the status of your award. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner McGuigan. Um, item number 7D is a the therapeutic dance, um, so Commissioner Saute is going to tell you. Okay, I just wanted to say that the therapeutic dance, which was last Saturday, went really well. Everybody seemed like they were having a really good time, and everyone looked amazing in their costumes. I wanted to thank all the volunteers who helped set up for the dance. You did a great job. And I also wanted to thank all of the donors. So thank you, Pyology, Stonefire Grill, Paul Martins, Edward and Terry Canner, Rekka Garg, Janice Wise, Shrinky Drinks, Astra Industrial Services, Diamond Ground Products, Karen Sue, Robin McEwen, Alistair George, Sequoia Middle Sco School, <laughs> Julie Boyajan, Great Harvest, Andrea Bryman, Newbury Park High School, National Charity League, Trader Joe's, Caneo Youth Employment Service, Noah's Bagels, Starbucks, Panera Bread, Sawyer Phillips, Alan and Judy Sauté, and Richard Sauté. Thank you guys so much for your donations. You were super helpful. Thank you so much, Commissioner Saute. So the item, uh, the last item under the project discussion overview section is item number 7E, the City Internship Program. So I now turn the meeting over to Commissioner Brousseau. As many of you know, the City is hosting an exciting six-week summer internship program this summer for high school juniors. And um, now that we've finished recruiting many of our business, mis business partners, excuse me, um, we're looking for student applications. Um, like I said, we're lucky to have some amazing business par partners, <laughs> including uh, Diamond Ground Products and um, Sage, the City of Thousand Oaks, the library, uh, a law firm, so many other exciting opportunities. And um, student applications can be found at toaks.org forward slash youth. Um, or forward slash city, excuse me, toaks.org forward slash city. And um, you can apply there. The application deadline is April 10th. Um, and uh, we hope you'll apply for the, the exciting program. Thank you. Thank you again, Commissioner Brousseau. So um, the next item is item number eight. And Commissioner Schooley is going to give you the commissioner comment section of our meeting. So this is this is the last portion of our meeting where commissioners can provide any information or comments or announcements um, by which no action by the commission will be taken. So at this time, are there any commission comments? Uh, yes, Commissioner Pete Martinez. Yes, I want to thank all the commissioners for their hard work on the therapeutic dance. People uh, in the public don't really realize all the work and dedication that's involved to create a successful dance. And when I mean successful dance, I mean... Uh, going to the dance and looking at, at the faces of the participants and the smiles 
and the general good time and laughing, and that's because of your hard work, um, making decorations, setting it up, cleaning, and the participation of actually being involved with the, all the participants at the event. Um, it's a really heartwarming event, and I can't just say how much I appreciate all your hard work. Thank you so much. Well done. Are there any more commissioner comments? Um, commissioner Shao? I'd also like to thank again all the volunteers. We had a great showing this year of volunteers who worked really hard at our work party, especially the day of the dance. They were there from about 8 in the morning to 1 o'clock um, p.m. So that was a really long time for them to be working. They worked really hard, so thank you so much. And also, I just wanted to also say that for those of you who don't know, we had a chair for this event, Joelle Sote, who also did an amazing job. So thank you, Joelle, for doing such a great job. Commissioner Boyajian. I have two comments. Um, first, I would like to say um, one more thank you um, in regards to the therapy dance to Command Performance and um, Abby Leone and the rest of the Leone family for all of their hard work and extended effort into um, making the food and dessert go out smoothly. And really, it was it was just fabulous. So thank you again for all of your hard work. And also, I would just like to say that Thousand Oaks High School's Powder Puff game is this Saturday at 7 o'clock in the TOHS Stadium. So um, to all those TO kids out there watching, um, come support your school and watch the juniors and the seniors play a very friendly game of flag football. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Boyajian. Are there any more Commissioner comments? Um, Commissioner Mugagin? Uh, also, Arbor Day is a Saturday, so if you'd like to volunteer, come out to the library and help volunteer. It's like an all-day event, so just come for whatever you can, and it's just such a great event. It gives back to your environment, so... Um, Commissioner Shao. Sorry, one last announcement. Just a reminder for everyone watching, uh, the Youth Commission has expanded a lot of social media this year. So aside from our Facebook, which we post a lot of updates on, uh, also feel free to follow our Instagram, which is at Thousand Oaks YC, or follow our Twitter, which is T-O Youth. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Shao. So um, there being no more commissioner comments, um, if you would like any information about the Youth Commission or have questions about the agenda items discussed, please call 805-381-7362 or email youthcommission at toaks.org or like the Thousand Oaks Youth Commission on Facebook. Um, but there being no further business to come before the commission, uh, the Youth Commission meeting is adjourned to our next regular meeting.